Hello, and thank you for tuning into this week's Mayor's Update. As always, we have a lot of important information to share with you here this week, so please feel free to share this video with your friends, family, relatives, anyone else you think might find this information helpful over the course of the coming week. I want to start by saying a special thank you to everyone who came out to and supported or helped out in some way with the city's inauguration ceremony that took place just last week. Uh, the video of that ceremony is available on the city's YouTube channel and has been playing on our Channel 8 GE TV station. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, uh, my inaugural address at that was last week's update. Uh, we've talked about everything from the new businesses that are looking to open up in Gardner in the coming weeks uh, with Aldi's, uh, Chipotle, Five Below, Diamond Heart Art Studio downtown, and we newly announced that day, uh, Jersey Mike Sub Shop is going to take place over in the Timpani Crossroads uh, plaza in the building that doesn't have anything in it yet. So just next to Starbucks in the other building, that's where Jersey Mike's is set to open up as well. I want to, you know, it was just a great event. Uh, I want to thank our building department staff with our commissioner, Tom Zupa, our maintenance staff, Phil Hool and Thad Brown, our GETV staff, everyone who played a part in making that night a very special celebration for the city as a whole. I um, know we all really appreciate it here at City Hall, and I want to thank all of you who attended that as well for caring about what's going on in the city, and thank all of our performers that evening with the Greater Gardner Community Choir, uh, Surround Sound, the Gardner Middle School Select Choir, and our MC, uh, Master of Ceremonies, Dr. Stephanie Marchetti, who's the Executive Director of the Montachusett Veterans Outreach Center. Uh, it was a great night all around, so thank you to all of you. While we're on the topic of the inauguration, I also want to take the time on behalf of our city's elected officials to thank Higher Ground Ministry and Pastors John and Kate Kamensky for putting on the special prayer service that they did to kick off the new municipal cycle here in Gardner. They've done this our past couple uh, inaugurations, invited the area's clergy uh, to come together uh, in one building, so no matter, uh, a bunch of the different churches were represented there uh, to just pray for the city's uh, new term. Uh, we do have another cer uh, ceremony similar to that with the uh, Annunciation Parish having a Catholic Mass for the city on Sunday, January 28th at 4 p.m. Uh, for, again, just a way to start off the municipal term. So I want to thank all of our clergy in the city for everything that they've done as well, uh, and those who participated in the inauguration ceremony, uh, Father Chiago uh, Ibiapina from Annunciation Parish and Reverend Dave Trelongo from Chair City Church uh, as well. This coming Tuesday, remember Tuesday because of the Martin Luther King holiday, we have a city council meeting. Uh, it looks like a very long agenda when you see it, uh, but I can tell you a lot of it's just simple referrals that'll be going out. Uh, there's about 30 or so appointments that I put up forward and several different notifications to the council of things that are gonna be happening later on in the year that I just wanted to write to them and give them an update on. Uh, so I do expect it actually to be somewhat of a quick city council meeting, even though the agenda is probably going to look quite long because of all the appointees that I put forward there for their consideration. A lot of those are going to be referred to the appointments committee. Uh, they'll have their confirmation hearings in front of the appointments committee. They'll likely be staggering those out with only taking a certain grouping at a time to make sure that they're not there for a elongated period. And then uh, those appointments will be confirmed by the city council as the city council president and the chair of the appointment committee, uh, George Tyros, uh, really uh, you know, schedule out how they're gonna do those confirmation hearings. So keep an eye out for those. And again, if the city council agenda looks massive, uh, it's because it's, uh, there's a lot that's newly put on there. So it'll be you know, separated out and scheduled out in the next coming months. Uh, with that said, too, we want to remind people that there are two other meetings of the city council that are set, set to take place on Tuesday as well. At 625, there'll be a joint meeting of the City Council and the School Committee to appoint a representative from Gardner to serve on the Monty Tech School Committee. Uh, right now, we have Mr. Eric Commodore, who actually serves as the chair of the Monty Tech School Committee, uh, who is already on there in the middle of his four-year term. And this is the uh, position that was currently held by former city councilor James Boone, uh, who has chosen not to put in for that seat again. I believe we have two individuals who have uh, put in for consideration before the city council, so we'll see how the city council votes on that with the school committee. Uh, it will be a joint meeting of the two of them, and that's how the district agreement, so the contract that we have with Monty Tech for Gardner's membership in the district, outlines how that appointment procedure goes, and that's what's happening at 625. At 645, there will be a joint meeting with the City Council and the Planning Board to review the zoning proposals uh, that have been submitted by Councillor Daner Heath, and this is a public hearing 
on uh, increasing the cap on marijuana facilities that are allowed in the city and uh, putting sports betting into the city's uh, zoning table of uses. Uh, so that'll be a public hearing in front of a joint meeting of the city council and the planning board that'll take place at 645. And then the regular school, uh, city council meeting will take place at 730. Uh, guard, this is a, excuse me, January is a five week month. So just know that by charter, the city council meets on the first and third Monday. So there is a week that we won't have a city council meeting this week, this month. A reminder to all residents that dog licenses are now available uh, for our uh, four footed community here in Gardner. Uh, just a reminder, you need to get those in by March 1st. Uh, or if you hit the March 15th deadline. Uh, if you don't do that, you actually do get a citation from the city and those citations can go all the way to court if you don't uh, pay those there. So you wanna make sure that's as quick and simple and easy as possible there. Uh, as a reminder, Councilor General Lowitz and I a couple years ago put forward some proposals before the city council that were all unanimously adopted. So if you are over the age of 75, you don't need to pay for your dog license either. Uh, you just need to fill out the form so we have that on file to make sure that they're meeting all the state law requirements for rabies certificates, different health, uh, checks and things like that. Uh, so again, if you're over 75, you don't have to pay for your license, but you do still need to fill out the application and send that in. Uh, and again, you have until March to send those in. So please get those in as early as possible so you're not left scrambling at the last minute. And while we're left talking about things to make sure you turn in before you scramble at the last minute, real, uh, quarterly property taxes are due on February 1st. Uh, those were mailed out by the treasurer's office. Uh, so make sure you get those in as well so that you avoid any penalties, fines, late fees, charges, anything like that to make sure again, it's as simple as it can be for uh, both you and us here at City Hall. We wanna remind people that City Hall will be closed this coming Monday in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, and we will reopen again at normal business hours, 8 a.m. on Tuesday uh, the 16th. So make sure again, if you need anything done by City Hall soon, you get it done on Friday or you'd have to wait until Tuesday. Uh, we talked a little bit before in one of these updates about how we were dealing with a shortage of contractors for our plowing services here in Gardner. I do want to say that we have rectified that situation uh, between when we last spoke about those, we had the last storm and uh, you know where we are today. We've actually hired four different plowing contractors for the city. So it's great to be able to see that we're able to get um, you know really rolling with that. Uh, process and get us up to close to where we need to be. We still have some slots available if anyone is interested, but uh, all of our city parking lots and some of our streets uh, that were empty should now be covered with the plowing contracts that we've been able to put forward and really make that push to get people uh, contracted with the city so we can get the roads and the uh, in the parking lots cleared up in a timely manner. Uh, for the next couple parking bans that we put out as snow comes out, we will be putting out a separate ban for the parking lots just to make sure that we can get everything covered in time. And you notice this with the most recent parking ban that we put forward. We had the streets closed until seven and the parking lots closed from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. They'll always be staggered like that. That way, if you can't park in the parking lots, you can park in the street and vice versa. Uh, but just know that is going to be something that we're going to be issuing soon just to make sure that we can get that as clear as possible while we're still making sure that we're at adequate staffing levels for our plowing crews. I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who came out to North Central Massachusetts uh, this last Friday. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll did a presentation before the North Central Massachusetts Chamber of Commerce over at Great Wolf Lodge and invited myself and representatives of Gardner's businesses to go attend that event. Uh, it was great to see how the Healy Driscoll administration is still continuing to make a concerted effort to make sure that us here in North Central Massachusetts are being heard, our concerns are being addressed, and really making sure that we're not getting blindsided by the bigger cities like Worcester and Boston, Springfield, and other places around the Commonwealth. Uh, so thank you to Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for that effort there. And I want, lastly want to close out by uh, letting you all know that we will have a special event on Tuesday, January 23rd at 12 noon at the Gardner Municipal Airport. We're going to have the official ribbon cutting and grand reopening of the airport. Some of you may remember in a couple of these earlier updates, we talked about how the city got a $5.4 million federal grant to completely dig up and re construct the entire airport runway and taxiway system from the ground up. Uh, that process has been completed and we've also done several renovations to the administration building over there. Hopefully down the line in the next five to 10 years, we'll have a uh, small coffee shop in there too, but that's not something we're at right now. Uh, that's just in the long-term plans. But again, Tuesday, January 23rd 
at 12 noon, uh, Congresswoman Trahan and representatives of Senator Warren and Markey's office will be at the Garden Municipal Airport to officially cut the ribbon on this phase of the project and reopen the runway at uh, GDM, the Garden Municipal Airport. So if you're available to join us, feel free to join us at that time. That concludes this week's update. As always, if you have any questions on anything that's happening in the city at all, you can feel free to contact my office at any time. Thank you very much and have a great day.